I'm Kiana and I'm here with my dress for Missy because we are gonna t we are I am gonna teach you how to make this cute little velvet bikini anyways I asked you guys on Instagram which bikini style you wanted to see me teach you how to do and this is the one that won honestly it was my least favorite so thanks guys but you know the people want what the people want so here you go also when I was patterning this I patterned it to fit me perfectly and she does fit me perfectly so I'm really happy about that it doesn't fit her perfectly because she has a bigger chest than me and a smaller bum but I am not going to give you the visual of it on me because I am uncomfortable prancing around the internet half naked for this video so this is the visual you get sorry anyway so if you want to learn how to make this cute bikini that Missy is wearing just keep on watching. Also feel free to subscribe, like, leave requests down below. Um, yeah, and that's it, let's just get started. Okay, starting with the pattern making. I'm gonna do all the pattern making first and then show you how to construct it. So just watch the video fully first before you start freaking out if it gets confusing because some things that might be confusing now will be cleared up later on. Also, I have no pattern papers, so I'm using this Trader Joe's shopping bag. Um, so I'm just starting off by squaring it out. Then I made a mark six inches below the top mark because that's how like tall I want the bikini to be at the side seam. Because I want to, you know, cover myself a little more. If you don't want to cover yourself that much, you can make it like three or four inches. Um, then I made a mark 7.5 inches over from the side because that's the distance from my side seam to the center front. Then I'm just making a line down the middle so I can figure out how long the tie is going to be and where the tie is going to stop. So I made the ties 8 inches long and I'm going to connect that point to the side seams by making a curved line. And the beauty of this is that it doesn't have to be super precise because it is a tie bathing suit. I want my side seams to be gathered so instead of just connecting that point to the regular side seams, I'm going to lengthen that side seam to be 9 inches instead of 6 inches so I can gather that and make it ruched and gathered on the side and you'll see what I'm talking about later on. I also always take the time to label my pattern pieces in depth so I don't get confused later on. And then now I'm just adding a seam allowance for one half of an inch all the way around the pattern piece and then I'm going to cut it out and that will be the shell of the front of the bathing suit. Now we're gonna make the pattern for the back of the bathing suit and the side seam is gonna be six inches wide or six inches tall because we are gathering that front piece to fit into that six inch section. If you're confused, I promise you'll understand what I'm talking about later on when you see it happen visually. And then I'm also making a mark at the top of the bathing suit, six inches wide, and then a mark at the bottom of the bathing suit a little bit narrower than that just because you know your waist is more narrow than the top of your chest so that's why i did that now i'm making a mark in the center of the back and then i'm gonna actually make the center back a little bit more narrow and like like shorter than the side seam because i want it to have that look you can actually just leave it as a straight up trapezoid rectangular looking piece it's not really gonna matter i'm just very specific so i made it into this shape and then I'm adding my half inch seam allowance all the, way, all the way around except for at the center back because we're going to cut that on the fold so it doesn't need seam allowance. And then after that, I'm just going to label my piece with some information so I don't get confused later on. Here's a visual of the front against the back at the side seams and you can see how that front is going to have to be gathered to be able to fit against the back piece at the side seams. Now I'm making the pattern piece for the front lining and the back lining is the same as the back shell but the front lining is a little bit different in that we don't want it to be gathered so I'm just tracing out the shell front piece and then I'm going to take away the gathering. So I'm going to make that side seam back to being six inches wide, and then I'm just gonna connect the side seams to that front point. You can also make the decision that if you don't want your front shell piece to be gathered at the side seams, you don't have to do that. So this pattern piece right here would be used for both the lining and the shell instead of having two separate patterns. Now I'm just cutting it out and I'm showing you how this lining piece looks up against the shell piece. As you can see, the only thing that was different was the width of the side seams. 
So that's all the patterning for the top. Now we're gonna go to the bottom, which is actually a little bit easier because I'm just tracing out some bottoms that already fit me pretty well, except I'm going to make it a higher rise than these because these are a little bit too low rise for me. So instead of just tracing out the top of the bikini bottoms, I'm making it two inches taller than before and then connecting all of those lines to each other. I am labeling my piece again as always, and then I'm going to add half inch seam allowance around the entire bikini bottom except at the center back because that will be cut on the fold. The front is gonna be done basically the exact same way as the back. So I'm just gonna speed through this part, but there are some key things that I want you to note. Like right now I'm measuring the side seam of the back piece so I can make sure the side seam of the front piece is also the same length. So when we sew them, one piece is not longer than the other because we connect those two pattern pieces at those points. I'm also doing the same thing with the crotch so that those measurements can be the same thing. And then again, I'm just connecting all the points and then adding half inch seam allowance. And after you're done with that, you're done patterning for the bathing suit. So there are two pattern pieces for the bottoms and three for the top. Now you wanna lay out all your pattern pieces onto the fabric that you'll be using and cut out all your pieces. Make sure you cut out pieces for your shell and pieces for your lining. Normally I would use different fabric for the shell and different fabric for the lining. And I am for the bottoms, but for the top, since it does have that tie detail in the front, you'll be able to see the lining at that point. So I'm actually gonna cut out the top from the shell fabric for both the shell and the lining. For now, we're just gonna focus on the shell. So grab the two larger front pieces and then one of the back pieces. And we are gonna go ahead and gather that front piece at the side seam so it can be sewn to the side seam of the back piece. To gather my fabric, I'm gonna sew two rows of basting stitches in the seam allowance. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and then leave the tails of the thread really long at the end so I can pull them through. A basting stitch is also basically just a regular stitch with long stitches. And then I'm gonna grab the top two threads or the bottom two threads, as long as it's consistent, and then gather it up to be the length of the side seam in the back. As you can see, that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in place so the gathers stay in place. And then I'm gonna sew up both side seams. I'm using a serger to sew up all my seams, but if you don't have a serger, you can just use a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Now I'm grabbing the lining of my top and basically doing the same exact thing, but without the gathering step. So I'm just sewing up the side seams. However, on one of the side seam, I'm gonna leave this like two inch hole. And this is really important because at the end, we're gonna use this hole to flip our work back right side out. And you'll see what I'm talking about later. This hole is so important. So just leave like a two inch gap on one of the sides. You can see me here leaving this two inch gap, just sewing off the edge of the fabric. Again, it's so important, so do not forget this step. And I'm using my serger, but you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Now I am going to pin my bottoms right side together and sew along the side seams and the crotch for both the shell and also the lining. Going back to the top now, we have our shell right here and then our lining piece on top. I'm just gonna put those right sides together and basically just sew around the entire thing, leaving no piece unsewn, just the entire perimeter. I'm gonna use my serger to sew all the way around that. Again, you can use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger. I'm just gonna go back into the ends of where the ties are and make that pattern piece look a little bit more pointy instead of squared off at the end so when it's all tied it looks pointy and not like it's a little square stump 
And so this is the hole I told you about leaving earlier. So we're gonna use this hole to flip our work back right side out. And then we wanna close up that hole. I'm just using a regular straight stitch on my sewing machine. Normally I'd like hand stitch it, but I don't care because it's on the inside. <laughs> And that was actually the last step for the top. So moving back to the bottoms, I'm going to take the shell and the lining and put those together, right sides together, and then sew along the waistband area with either a serger or a zigzag stitch. Now I'm gonna take some elastic and I'm going to attach that to that waistband area. I'm gonna actually pull my elastic ever so slightly as I attach it to the waistband area because you want it to be really tight against your body and pulling it a little bit as you sew it allows it to fit up against your body. And then when I get to the end, I'm gonna just connect that elastic back to the beginning and then I'm gonna use that to finish sewing the elastic to the waistband area. Now I'm gonna go to my regular sewing machine and use a zigzag stitch just to top stitch that waistband area down so the elastic won't keep popping up and the lining won't keep coming out. Um, it just keeps it really secure. Then I'm gonna go back to my serger and just finish the edges of the leg holes. And then once those are all serged and finished off, I'm going to turn those under, like turn the hem under at the leg hole area and then zigzag top stitch those hems down and then that's the last step you're done okay so that was the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it please like subscribe all that jazz leave a request down below if you have anything that you want to see and yeah thank you so much for watching see you next time bye